welcome one and all to Beat the Nation. I'm Graham Garden. And I'm Tim Brooke Taylor. Now, every question you're about to hear has already been asked to over a thousand people of all ages right across Great Britain. And the scores of our contestants will depend on just how clever the nation is. For example, we asked the nation how many years are there in a millennium? A millennium is made up of a thousand years and our poll reveals that a very respectful 72% of our very bright nation knew the answer. So if one of our contestants got that right, they'd have beaten 28% of the nation and scored 28 points. Right, so let's see who's going to be trying to score points and beat the nation today. Tim. Well, first up is Raymond Coe. He's a litigation lawyer from South East London and he's returning for the third time. And moving on now to Anna Watson-Jones. She's a digital retoucher from Jesmond in Newcastle. Anna, explain to me what a digital retoucher is. Um, I make ugly people look attractive using a computer, which right, is very exciting. You hit them with it. <laughs> <laughs> and straighten them up. Yes. Moving on now to our next guest, who is Tony Day. He's an insurance broker from Cowes in the Isle of Wight. Well, you read The Guardian, you must be very bright indeed. <laughs> Deborah is next. Deborah Raphael, who is a registered childminder from Bromley in Kent. She says she's in the top 50%-ish. Would you say, what would you say now that you're on the programme? I'll just stick with that. And then if I do any better, there we go. All Pretty right, good. you read The Independent. That's the sort of middle ground it takes. <laughs> yeah. Great. Those are our four contestants. Good, so can any of you beat the nation today? Let's find out. Round one, as always, features questions that most people in Britain don't know the answer to. Our polling tells us that less than half of the nation can answer the following questions. Can you? And can our contestants? Let's find out. Fingers on the buzzers, please. Here come the questions. What is the principal ingredient of the Greek dish taramasalata? And that's Raymond. Potatoes. It's not potatoes, Greg. Anna. Fish eggs. Fish eggs, fish roe, exactly, yes. 21% of the nation knew that, 79% didn't, so you get 79 points. Good start, Anna. Very good. What is the popular name for the itchy complaint tinea pedis? <coughs> Anna. Athlete's foot. Yes, it is. Well, Anna, you need 71 points and you get 78 points, so you go straight through on two questions. That's very good indeed. Well done. Straight through goes Anna. Raymond, Tony and Deborah are still to score here. OK, Jim Hawkins is the narrator of which novel? Deborah. Treasure Island. Yes, he is. And you get 67 points for that, Deborah. Here's a picture. What does this symbol identify on an ordnance survey map? <coughs> Deborah. Windmill. It is a windmill. You need 83 and you get 79 for that. Ooh. Very close, nearly there. You need four, everybody else needs 150. <laughs> which dictator was nicknamed Il Duce, meaning Raymond? Mussolini. Mussolini, yes, he was the yeah. leader. You get 70 points for that, Raymond. Who is the famous mother of Rocco Ricci? Deborah. Madonna. You need four. Madonna's the right answer. Is she going through? She's going through with <laughs> 65 points. Well done, Deborah. Right, it's down to Raymond, who needs 80, and Tony, who needs 150. Doris Day's hit, Secret Love, came from which film? Tony. Calamity Jane. <laughs> is the right answer, you yes. Get 88 points, well done. The wine Matthias Rosé comes from which country? Tony. Portugal. Portugal is right. You need 62 and you get 76, so you get through to the next round. <laughs> right, a very good round one there, but Raymond did fail to qualify to go through to round two. But uh, we would like to give you the chance to win £100 to take home. Tim. Raymond, you could leave with £100 from my personal bank account if you can predict just how clever the nation is when asked the following question. Which country is known in its own language as Nippon or Nihon? Well, it, it's a very polite country, and you probably know of Japan. But what percentage of the nation do you think knew the answer? If you can guess within 10% of how much the nation knew the answer to that question, I can give you £100. I'll go for around 50. Let's see how the nation did on this question, and what percentage knew the right answer. So, come on, come on. To it, up to it, come on, you know that. Oh, oh 36. Oh, no, 36% is the only amount that knew. Well, I'd have gone with you, I have to say, but I'm sorry, I'm afraid you'll be going without any of our money. But thanks for being a great contestant. Yeah, thank you. 
So, after all this time, it's goodbye to Raymond. But he leaves us with Anna, Tony and Deborah. And now it's round two. Just six questions here, and as ever, these questions have been asked to over a thousand people right across Britain. But they've also been asked to a celebrity guest. Our contestants will score points for correct answers, but they'll also score bonus points if they can predict whether our celebrity knows the answer too. So, Tim, who's today's celebrity? It's the very flamboyant interior designer, Lawrence Llewellyn Bowen. There we are. We'll have to wait and see if Lawrence's performance is as striking as his velvet three pieces. <laughs> uh, contestants, put your fingers on the buzzers, please, because the questions start now. Who in Greek mythology fell in love with his own reflection? <laughs> Anna. Narcissus. Narcissus is right. You get 57 points for that, but to double it, you've got to guess whether Lawrence got that right or wrong. Which do you reckon? Well, I think if there's anyone in the country who should be in love with his own reflection, it would be Lawrence Lauren and Bone, so I'm going to go for yes. I think he will get it. Well, let's see if he did get it right. In Greek mythology, Narcissus fell in love with his own reflection. And then, quite interestingly, was killed by a discus and transformed into a flower, the Narcissus. Extra information. And you get double points, 114. Here's the next question. Which herb was thought in medieval times to promote wisdom? Anna. Sage. Sage, yes. 72 points, but once again, you can double that score by guessing whether Lawrence gets it right or wrong. I think you'll get it right again. Lawrence, help Anna. The, in medieval times, um, Winkle Wonkle Wart was believed to promote wisdom. <laughs> Little known herb. Winkle Wonkle Wart, so I'm afraid not. You don't get the double points. Our researchers had to go through every encyclopedia in the world to prove that Winkle Wonkle Wart didn't exist. So, <laughs> um, there we are. On to the next question. Anna, 186. Tony and Deborah are still to score. Third question. In Holst's suite, The Planets, which planet was the bringer of war? <laughs> Tony. Mars. Mars is right. 65 points, Tony, but to double it, you've got to guess whether Lawrence Llewellyn Bowen got that right or wrong. I think you'll know that. OK, Lawrence, did you know that? Mars is the bringer of war in whole suite, the planets. No Winkle Wonkers mentioned at all. You get <laughs> double points, 130. OK, 186, Tony, 130, Deborah, still to score. Andalusia and Galicia are historic, Anna. Spain. Spain, yes. 68 points. So, once again, we have to ask, did Lawrence Llewellyn Bowen get that right or wrong, Anna? I think he'll definitely get that one right. He'll definitely get that. Come on, Lawrence, let's see if you definitely get this right. Andalusia and Galicia are historic regions of Spain. Yes. He got it right. 68 points becomes 136. It's doubled. According to the Edward Lear poem, the pobble lacks which bit of its anatomy? <laughs> Deborah. Tail. Not tail, I'm afraid. Anyone else? <coughs> Tony. Head. <laughs> That'd be silly. <laughs> <laughs> Anna? I'm not going to offer anything. Nose. Very close. Toes. <laughs> oh, don't get any points, but let's see if Lawrence got that right or wrong. It's a poem. It's got a rhyme. No, the pobble lacks taste. Name like that. You got that wrong. The pobble has no toes. <laughs> Graham. And we come to the last question. Which famous flamboyant entertainer and pianist made his <laughs> classical Deborah? Liberace. Liberace is right. How, were you, how was that going to finish, Graham? Made his classical debut at 14 in 1933 with the Chicago Symphony Orchestra. Well, you've still got it right, and it's yes. 48 points, but you can double it if you think that Lawrence Llewellyn Bowen got it right or wrong. Go one way or the other. He's got to know that. He's got to know that. Yeah. Lawrence, did you know <laughs> that? Uh, Liberace made his debut um, in 1930, whenever, for whomever. Flamboyant kind of gave it away. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it gave it away, didn't it? It's 48 points, now it becomes 96, and it's double. Deborah there at last on 96 points, but Tony's on 130, Anna way ahead on 322, so Deborah, I'm afraid this is where we say goodbye. Deborah, it's very sad, but you did do a little flourish at the end, so you go off with dignity and your head held high. Thanks Thank for you. coming on the show. So, Deborah, I'm afraid you won't be joining us in part two, but to soften the blow, Tim will try and help you to win £100. I'll try, Graham. Deborah, you could be leaving with £100 if you can work out who scored the highest from these two countries, the Scottish or the Welsh. When asked this question, which flowers did Wordsworth see when he wandered lonely as a cloud? So when Wordsworth wandered, he saw daffodils. Yes, you knew that. But 
Did the Scots or the Welsh know their flowers and poets? Who scored the highest? So you've got two guess. I think it's going to be close, but I'll go for the Scottish. So let's see what percentage of the Welsh knew that first. We want this to be a low figure. 30... Mm. Oh, that is a low figure. Yeah. Is that not the national flower? <laughs> it is, yes. <laughs> oh, dear. Um, well, I'm slightly sweating for you on the Scottish now. Let's see if they knew it. What percentage of the Scots knew? 50%. Yeah. You'd think yeah. Welsh would be hot on daffodils, anything with daffodils, because of their national flower. Well, they didn't, but you get £100, which is the good news. Thank but we you. have to say goodbye to Deborah, don't we, Graham? We do indeed. Very sadly, we say goodbye to £100 <laughs> as Deborah <laughs> takes it away with her. In part two, Anna and Tony will be going head to head to see which one of them will be trying to beat the nation. But I think now it's time Tim gave us one of his tricky little one-percenters. Yes, this question was answered correctly by just one percent of the nation. A very tall order indeed. What is the name of the island which separates the two principal parts of Niagara Falls? Got the answer at home? Well, you'll have to wait until after the break to see if you're right. See you shortly. See you then. Welcome back to Beat the Nation. Now, Tim, 99% of us are agog to know the answer to that little 1% question you set before the break. Yeah, well, before the break, I asked you, what is the name of the island which separates the two principal parts of Niagara Falls? Now, we've got two pretty bright contestants here, Anna and Tony. Do either of you know no the answer idea. to that? Not, Not a clue. Not a clue, no. <laughs> no, I have to say that I wouldn't have known either. And the answer is Goat Island. And if you got that at home, very well done indeed. <laughs> so, Anna and Tony remain in the quiz, and now the pressure is really on. In this round, I'm going to ask questions to each contestant in turn. The questions get harder and harder, until someone finally cracks and gives me a wrong answer. Wrong answers will cost a life, and our contestants start with only three lives each. So this is serious stuff. Uh, Anna, you were the highest scorer in the last round, so the first question will go to you. Let battle commence. And here are the questions, starting with an easy one to Anna. In which dance originating in the West Indies does the dancer bend backwards and pass under a bar which is gradually lowered? Limbo. Limbo is right. Tony, a 21-pointer here. Pediatrics is a branch of medicine dealing with the diagnosis and treatment of diseases of which section of the population? Uh, children. Children, correct. Anna, a 55-pointer. Which director had his first major success with the 1975 film Jaws? Steven Spielberg. That's right. 69-pointer here. Most people couldn't answer this one, Tony. Which song was heard over the titles of the TV series Birds of a Feather? No, don't know that. I'm afraid you're going to lose a life. It's What'll I Do? Two lives left, Tony. Anna has three. The question stays with you, Tony, and it's an easy one again. What name is shared by a British monarch, a variety of plum and a type of sponge cake? Victoria. Victoria is right. Anna, 26-pointer. Which two letters are used to designate human male and female chromosomes? X and Y. X and Y is correct. Back to Tony, 52-pointer. The airline Qantas was founded and has its headquarters in which country? Australia. Australia, yeah. Anna, a 66-pointer. Most people don't know the answer to this one. In the TV series Mork and Mindy, which planet did Mork come from? Mm. In danger of losing life here. Oh. Nanu, I don't know. Nanu. <laughs> Nanu featured. The planet was actually called Ork, mm. but you lose a life. That's two lives remaining for each of you. Hang on to them, whatever you do. The questions begin again with you, Anna, an easy one. What system of pictorial writing was used in ancient Egypt? Uh, hieroglyphics. Yes, it was. Tony, 23-pointer. Members of which profession are represented by the trade union, the NUT? That's teachers. It is teachers. Anna, 50-pointer. From which wood are cricket bats traditionally made? Willow. Willow, yeah. Tony, 68-pointer. Which metal is used for the barrels of the best quality darts? Tungsten. Tungsten. Did you know that? I did. You did. <laughs> you were right. <laughs> Anna, the pressure is really on you now with a 76-pointer. Hedera helix is the scientific name for which climbing evergreen plant? Ivy. 
It is, yeah. Tony, right. Aged pointer puts the pressure right on you again. Which sport was first played in England by the 10th Hussars in 1869? Polo. <laughs> Very well worked out, I guess. Anna, an 88 pointer puts a lot of pressure on you. The climax of which Alfred Hitchcock film takes place on Mount Rushmore? North by Northwest. North by Northwest is correct. Tony, it's really getting hard now. 91 pointer. How many planets in the solar system are larger than the Earth? Four. That's right. So, Anna, you're facing a 94 pointer to hang on to one of those two last lives. What is the chemical symbol for the element plutonium? PU is the right answer. That is fantastic. This is a fantastically hard it's too battle. Close, here. Too close, too close. Only 5% of the people in the country know the answer to this one, which is going to Tony. Which part of the human body is called the hallux? Which part of the human body is called the hallux? Have a guess for a life. The leg. No, it's the big toe. So, Tony, after that, <laughs> wow, That's incredible battle impressive. up to 95 points there. You lose a life, I'm afraid. Anna, two lives. Tony has one. It stays with Tony, starting with the easy questions again. Jerry Marsden of Jerry and the Pacemakers has twice been in the UK singles charts, singing about the ferry across which river? The Mersey. That's right, yes. Anna, 30-pointer. Who first topped the UK singles charts in 1988 with I Should Be So Lucky? Kylie Minogue. Kylie Minogue, she did, yes. Tony, 51-pointer. Which group won the Eurovision Song Contest for Britain in 1981 with Making Your Mind Up? Harness Bucks Fizz. Bucks Fizz, they did, yeah. Anna, a 68-pointer. Which statue carries a tablet in its left hand inscribed with the date July the 4th, 1776? Statue of Liberty. Yes, it does. Tony, in which city might you pause for a coffee in the famous St Mark's Square? Venice. Venice is the proud possessor of St Mark's Square, hanging on to your life there by, <laughs> by your eyebrows. <laughs> Anna, for 84-pointer. Cats, pigs and which other animals have breeds called Mexican hairless? Mexican hairless. Cats, pigs and what? Dogs. Dogs is right. Phew, right. Tony, the pressure is way back on you again and only one life left. 85-point question here. English Bond, Dutch Bond and Flemish Bond are all terms used in what? Hang on to that life there. English Bond, Dutch Bond and Flemish Bond. Dancing. I'm afraid not. They're used in bricklaying. And that's your last life gone. Ah, oh, terrific game. I can't remember a better game. That was fantastic. I mean, you got right up to the under 10%, which several times was brilliant. Yes, very good, very, very tough work, and Anna was left there with two lives. Well done, Anna. In a moment, uh, you'll try and beat the nation, but Tony, very hard luck after all that effort, but uh, I think Tim might be trying to send you home with a little brown envelope with £100 in it. Well, let's hope I can, because now it's time for our Fame Game Challenge. On the screen, you'll see pictures of the miniature Aussie singer Kylie Minogue and another slightly less miniature Aussie, Rolf Harris. But which one do the nation most recognise? Who's the most famous, Kylie or Rolf? Guess correctly, and I'll gladly pass you the brown envelope. So, Tony, which do you reckon is the best known? Oh, it's going to be a dead heat, this one, I think. Um, <laughs> I'll say Rolf Harris. Let's see what percentage of the nation recognised Kylie Minogue. Oh, rather a lot. Oh. That's 68 per cent. So, fingers crossed to see if Rolf Harris, your choice, whether. More of the people of this country recognise Rolf Harris. Did they or didn't they? They've got to go up above 68%. Come on, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. Oh, what? Well Yay! Oh, <laughs> well, 94%. Can yes. you see what it is yet? <laughs> oh, 94 Well done. <laughs> Tony, you get £100 and Graham will, I hope, give you something else after because you deserve <laughs> at least that. It was a great head-to-head, nail-biting stuff. And uh, to be honest, I didn't know which way it would go. But thanks for being a great contestant, Tony. Well, it's goodbye to Tony after what I can only call a ding-dong battle there. And congratulations to Anna, who is just 90 seconds and 10 questions away from winning today's show. That's if you can beat the nation, and uh, this is how you can do it. 
as you know by now, your first question is easy. It's one that 90 to 100 percent of Britain could answer. Get it right, and we move on to a question that between 80 and 90 percent can answer, and so on. Don't worry if you get a question wrong. You'll just keep getting questions from the same level until you get one right. Yeah, so the questions keep getting harder and harder right up to the last level where you'll have to answer a question that less than 10% of the nation knows the answer to. Now, Tim, you've been following Anna's progress through this uh, titanic struggle. Absolutely. She got a lot of high scores, an 88 and 94. She knew the symbol for plutonium is PU, mm. and uh, the herb thought to promote wisdom in medieval times. She knew it was sage, and I think she's been taking a lot of that. <laughs> I, I don't so. want to ruin her chances by saying I think she'll make it, but I do. Yeah. <laughs> Well, why not? Absolutely. Anna, if you're ready, your uh, time starts shortly with an easy question. This one, 90 to 100% of people know the answer to. OK, it's coming up, and your time starts now. Of what is calligraphy, the art? Writing. Handwriting, yes. 80 to 90. Arthur Scargill was president of which trade union from 1981 to 2002? The TUC. No, he wasn't. Mm. It was mm. the mine workers. Uh, the koala bear is native to which country? Australia. That's right. 70 to 80. Which former English county gives its name to a type of long, unlinked sausage? Cumberland. Correct. 60 to 70. What title did the Queen bestow on Princess Anne in June 1987? Princess Royal. That's right. 50 to 60. Having a cathedral dedicated to him, who is the patron saint of London? Giles. St Paul. 50 to 60. The inhabitants of which American city refer to themselves as Angelinos? Los Angeles. Correct. 40 to 50. In Italy, ricotta and mascarpone are types of what? Cheese. Yep. 30 to 40. Which shape shares its name with the result of multiplying a number by itself? Square. Yep. 20 to 30. What is the colour of the Bakerloo line on a London underground map? Brown. That's it. 10 to 20. Viridian is a shade of which colour? Green. It is. Under 10%. In the Christian calendar, Ascension Day falls on which day of the week? Monday. No, Thursday. Which country joined the EEC on January the 1st, 1981? UK. Greece. Which of Shakespeare's comedies is partly set in the Forest of Arden? Twelfth Night. As you like it. Which soccer star of the 1950s was known as the Lion of Vienna? Pele. Oh. And time's up. Ah. Uh, the answer was Nat Lofthouse there. Uh, did you know that? No. That's, I didn't either. I no. didn't either. If that's no, it's no use at all, is it? <laughs> but you will be back in the next show, which is the great news. And, well, I really wanted you to win there, because you, I think you deserved it. Yes, bad luck after that titanic struggle. But don't worry, as Tim says, you will get to try again on the next show when you'll be meeting three new contestants, all trying to beat the nation. But before we all go and have a lie down, Tim <laughs> is going to leave us a little something on the state of the nation. Indeed I am, Graham. Uh, we asked the nation, what disease did Alois Alzheimer identify? And only 80% knew it was Alzheimer's disease. So that meant that 20% of the people thought that Alois's surname was a trick question. And don't you forget that you can pitch your wits at home against the nation by logging on to 3w's.channel4.com forward slash beat the nation. Until next time, goodbye. And goodbye from me. Angus and Dave have a challenge. It's eco and they've got to save the planet as well at 4.30. But next up on Daytime, Richard and Carol clock on for Countdown. <laughs>